Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. Okay guys, so hey, the video you're about to watch is a follow-up video to the video I made a while back where I discussed why the Titanic stern could not remain afloat after the ship broke in two. If you have not watched that video yet, I would encourage you to do so before you watch this one, just that way you'll have a clear understanding of everything that's going on. If you would like to watch that video, link for it in the description below. Anyway, at the end of that video, we were discussing why the Titanic stern went completely vertical after the ship broke in two and just before the final plunge. We also began to hypothesize some reasons as to why this may have happened. You see, I stated in that video that I believed it was because the Titanic's double bottom, which was the only thing holding the bow and stern sections of the ship together after the breakup, caused the bow to pull the stern vertical before it finally let go. However, after I stated that theory, I began to think about it a bit, and I thought, wait a minute, what if the double bottom failed almost immediately after the Titanic broke in two, and certainly before the bow would have had a chance to pull the stern vertical? If this happened and the stern was simply just floating on the surface for a time, could something else have caused the stern to go completely vertical just before the final plunge? The engines, maybe? Well, I looked into it a little bit, and as it turns out, I was right the second time. So once I figured all of this out, I thought I would make this short little follow-up video to that other video. That way, all of you would have a clear understanding of the physics and everything that happened to the Titanic stern during the ship's final moments. And with that, I hope you enjoy today's video. <music> Special thanks to Titanic Honor and Glory for providing some of the sinking animations you're going to see in today's video. If you would like to check out their work, please see the link in the description below. Okay, so to start off this video, let's first go over how we know for certain the Titanic's bow and stern sections did remain connected briefly following the breakup. Well, we know this based on evidence seen at the wreck site. You see, a while back, there was an expedition to the wreck of the Titanic, and the goal of this expedition was to map out the Titanic's entire debris field. Now, while they were in the middle of doing this, they found these two huge chunks of metal that were fully separated from the Titanic and thrown out into the debris field. When they found these chunks of metal, they weren't sure what to make of them. They obviously knew they were from the Titanic, but they weren't sure where on the Titanic these pieces came from. When they figured it out, though, they were stunned. You see, these two huge chunks of metal were literally part of the bottom of the Titanic. You know, they came from a chunk of the Titanic's double bottom slash keel. And when they figured this out, they were like, how on earth did this part of the Titanic's literal bottom get fully separated from the ship and thrown out into the debris field like this? But when they figured it out, they were stunned. You see, these chunks of the Titanic's double bottom were actually from the area where the Titanic broke into. This chunk of the ship's bottom was a fragment of the part of the double bottom slash keel that held the bow to the stern section following the breakup. Now, what these pieces of metal show us is that, you see, when the Titanic's bow fully submerged and the stern was still sitting on the surface and the double bottom was the only thing holding the two pieces together, well, you see, the double bottom, while it is incredibly strong, it doesn't bend very well. So what happened was, as the bow left the surface and was beginning to drop straight down and the double bottom attempted to hang on, because the double bottom couldn't bend, it began to peel away from the Titanic stern section. And then after a certain point, it couldn't peel away anymore. And then when the strain got too much, the double bottom separated from the bow and stern sections. Now, this fragment of the double bottom actually remained connected to the stern for a period after the breakup, just kinda, you know, bending down a little bit. Then eventually, after the Titanic stern section left the surface, where this section of the double bottom had bent down a little bit, it basically just kind of flopped around a little bit during the stern's descent, and eventually it fully separated from the stern and got thrown out into the debris field, and that's why we found it the way that we did on the wreck site today. So because the double bottom doesn't bend very well, ultimately what all of this evidence tells us is that it wouldn't be possible for the double bottom to hold the bow of the Titanic and the stern of the Titanic together long enough following the breakup for the bow of the Titanic to be able to pull the stern vertical like what we discussed in the last video. 
Ultimately, what this suggests is that the double bottom only held the two halves of the ship together for a couple of seconds, maybe only a few moments following the ship breaking into. So if it wasn't the bow section of Titanic that caused the stern to go vertical, like what we saw it do in the ship's final moments, ultimately, what was the cause for the stern to go vertical? Well, obviously the water that was entering the stern in the breakup area would play a huge role. And we also discussed in the last video how much damage the stern section received because of the breakup and how many openings into the ship's hull there were following the break. Again, link to that video in the description below. But I think that there was another factor besides the flooding that caused the stern to go vertical. And that is the heaviest objects that were within the Titanic. You see, these objects are now located within the stern section, and they were just aft of where the Titanic broke into. And that is the engines. The engines would ultimately play a huge role in how the stern would behave during the stern's final moments. Now, the Titanic had two different types of steam engines on board. There was the reciprocating steam engine and the low-pressure turbine engine. The reciprocating steam engine, the Titanic had two of these, and these were used to power the Titanic's two outer propellers. The Titanic's low pressure turbine engine was used to power the Titanic's central propeller. Now, the reciprocating steam engines, these things were massive. They were several stories tall, and they weighed somewhere around 730 tons a piece. Now, these engines were kept in the bottom of the Titanic, and they were in the area in between the Titanic's third and fourth funnel. So in other words, they were in an area directly affected by the Titanic breaking in two. Now, when the Titanic broke, the engine room where the reciprocating engines were kept would have flooded almost instantly. And it should go without saying that these engines, they have no buoyancy to them whatsoever. Once their engine room flooded, these engines basically became nothing but dead weight that wanted to fall all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. Now, when the Titanic broke in two and this room flooded, the weight of the engines caused the forward part of the Titanic stern section to sink down fairly low in the water. And this process allowed the ocean to begin flooding into the stern section fairly quickly. Now, the stern section remained on the surface for a couple of minutes. I think it was somewhere around, somewhere between four to six minutes following the breakup. But as the weight of the engines pulled the front of the stern section down, the weight of the water coming in, or the loss of buoyancy, well, this ultimately caused the stern, as it flooded, to slowly sink forward section first, and then it caused the aft end part of the stern section to begin to rise higher and higher into the air. This is ultimately why the stern section of Titanic went completely vertical once the Titanic broke into. Now, once the Titanic stern section was completely vertical and sticking straight up into the air, this was when the Titanic's engines influenced the stern section in an unexpected way. You see, one thing that is odd about how the Titanic stern behaved during her final moments and when she was completely vertical was how stable the Titanic stern section floated there like that, you know? She, the stern section didn't sway around, it didn't act like it was going to capsize or nothing. She simply floated there, sticking straight up out of the water for a few minutes until she finally flooded and sank. Well, the reason why the stern section was so stable is partially due to the Titanic's engines. You see, at this point, the engines are located at the very bottom of the stern section. And because these were the heaviest objects in the ship and they wanted nothing more than the free fall to the bottom of the ocean, well, due to the fact that they were bolted to the stern section, they couldn't fall out of it. They were stuck there. So because they couldn't sway around or move around, they just wanted to go straight down, they helped hold the stern in place while the water slowly made its way inside. And remember, at this point, there's still a lot of air in the top part or the back part of the stern section. So it's like the two forces, the weight of the engines and the air above, were helping keep the stern stable while the water slowly made its way into the stern section. And as the water came in and the air slowly got out, eventually the stern section slowly but surely and completely stably slowly sank straight down and slipped beneath the surface. That's a pretty cool bit of science and physics if you ask me. Now for a very brief period after the Titanic stern section left the surface, she continued to head down towards the bottom of the ocean 
just like she behaved while she was still partially above the surface, you know, just headed straight down and was falling fairly stably. However, after a while, as the water pressure around the stern section continued to build up, the air pockets that were still within the stern, helping keep it stable, well, these air pockets imploded, and the Titanic's stern section was crushed by the sea pressure surrounding it. Some of the survivors of the Titanic disaster said that a few seconds after the Titanic disappeared, they felt the ocean begin to shake, and they said they thought they heard what were underwater explosions beneath the surface. And in reality, that was the Titanic stern section imploding. Now, once this happened, and the forces or the counteracting forces, you know, the weight of the engines and the air above it, you know, helping keep the stern stable, well, these forces were completely gone. And then the hydrodynamic forces that were acting on the stern at this time, well, the stern section basically lost all buoyancy and all stability. And this caused the Titanic stern section to begin to spiral and basically free fall all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. It was during this spiral that those big chunks of the double bottom that we discussed earlier ripped off of the stern section and got thrown way out into the debris field like what we see on the wreck today. So yeah, with that, now all of you watching this video now have a good understanding of the science and physics behind what happened to the Titanic stern section during its final moments. And as I stated earlier, this was a pretty interesting piece of science, you know, learning how the Titanic stern section flooded and ultimately how it behaved during the final moments. I mean, it's pretty crazy stuff when you really think about it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a like. And if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much. It really helps out a lot. And I will see you guys in the next official Historic Travels video. Y'all take care. Special thanks to my Captain Level Patreon supporter, Tammy Lee. Thank you so much for all the support.